there, my name is Zilla. Welcome to my YouTube channel, where we talk about the Bible and all that God has for us. If you haven't met yet, then welcome. What's your name? Wow, what a great name. So this is my house in the back, and here's my dog. His name is Sage. I just got him, and I'm learning a lot about how to take care of him and what it means to be a good dog parent. But that's not why we're here. Today, we're gonna to learn about Moses and the Israelites coming out of Egypt. Have you ever heard that story before? You haven't? Well, let me tell you about it. We just learned about it in Sunday school, but I think I still need to learn more. One really cool thing that happened is we got this new house, and in the closet, apparently it teleports you to a new place. All right, Sage, good boy, sit. All right, let's go inside and I'll show you around. So here's where I keep my chest for all sorts of adventures that will be going on in the next couple videos. And then this is where I work on all my tools, repair and cook and all that. And then this is my room. That's my bed, but Sage isn't allowed on. No, Sage, not on the bed. Don't go, don't go. Oh, phew, I thought he was gonna get up. Oh my goodness, Sage, get off the bed, get off the bed. Bad boy, oh, okay. He's not allowed on the bed. That scared me. Okay, let's go into the closet and see what happens. Open the door and... Oh my goodness, I'm falling! Oof! Oh, I'm glad I'm okay. Sage, you're okay too. Where am I? Oh my word. This looks like a completely different world. I think I'm in Egypt. Wow. My closet really did work. It took me back in time to Egypt. That's crazy. Do you guys see all this? Oh, hi Sage. What are you looking at? Don't run away, please. Okay, he's staying. Let's explore a little bit and see what we can find. These statues are so big and tall. I wonder what they mean. Hmm, this must be where all the fishermen come to drop off their fish and all the merchants as well. Look at how big that ocean is. That's crazy. That must be why they have so many boats because there's so many fish to reel in. And look at this crane, it's huge. That must be how they build all these big boats. Okay, let's keep walking around through the docks and see what else we can find. Wow, the buildings are massive. I'm getting tired just running and Sage can't even keep up with me. He's zooming past us. Careful Sage, I'll go down these stairs and see what's over here. This looks like maybe a village of some sort. Yeah, I think this is a village. Those trees are so cool how they shade the area. And these houses are beautiful. Ooh, look, I think I see some flowers. Maybe orange flowers and some hay. Let's go inside. Hmm, no one's in here. There's a bed and stuff, so people obviously live here. Interesting. Maybe we can keep looking for people. Do, 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 do. Hmm. What's around this corner? Wow, more houses? And the castle walls extend all the way. That's crazy. Hmm. I wonder what's over here. Ooh, looks like carrots. Wow. I'm gonna jump past. I don't really like carrots, even though they're really good for you. Maybe Sage will eat one. Uh, good boy. Sit. Yes, Dan, good job. Ooh, more carrots. Wow. There must be a lot of people here. And then look at these beautiful flowers. The Egyptians were really good farmers, it looks like. Whoa, oh my goodness, look at how big that pyramid is. Come on, Sage, let's go to the pyramid. Oh my goodness, that is so far away. I'm getting kind of tired. All right. I'm gonna keep going. Oh my goodness, there's another pyramid. How many pyramids are there? This is huge. Wow. And look at all the statues of the pharaohs. Oh my goodness, we made it to the top. I'm so scared. I'm gonna fall off. I'm just gonna sit by the edge right here. Sage, no. Oh, Sage, I thought you were jumping off. Oh my goodness, I need to put a leash on you. Come back up here, boy. It's not safe. Look how tall we are. I'm just gonna crouch over by the edge. Oh, oh my word. It's so 
high up here. I'm in the clouds, it feels like. I can't believe that we were able to build this back then. Let's try to, this door. Oh, this door's closed. Hmm. Maybe they don't want anyone to go into the Great Pyramids. I can understand why. I won't go in. Okay, maybe let's try going into the city and seeing if we can find anyone. Wow, look at these pyramids made of gold and purple. That was a sign of royalty. Hmm, and look at the statues. All right, let's go into the city and see if we see anyone. Wow, these pillars are so big. It's so grand. I think I could live here maybe. Of course, I would need to know that I'm not gonna be a slave like the Israelites were. Wow, look at this. This is crazy. And look at the markets. Hmm, maybe we should go explore some in the markets and see what we can find. Wow, look at this market. It's so pretty how they designed the floors like that. But there's still no townspeople. It's almost like everyone left in a hurry. I wonder why. Hmm, we'll keep going down this way. Another cool market floor. I wonder what they use these for. Let's try this area, see what we can find. Have you guys seen anyone? No? Okay. Well, we'll keep looking. Wow, this must be where one of the kings were. Sorry, the pharaohs lived. I'm gonna knock on this door and see if anyone's home. No? No one's here still. Okay. Um. Okay, well, I'm gonna look in one of these houses next and see if I can find any clues as to where everyone went. A place like this shouldn't be empty, especially when it's so big and has so many resources. Hello? Is anyone here? Hmm. Well, there's a bed. Oh, look, a book. I wonder what it says. It says, God has answered our prayers and delivered us out of Egypt. So we are now in the desert as we follow him and Moses. Okay, now that we know where everyone went, let's go back and read the Bible and see what the Bible has to say about why everyone's gone. We're back. Time to start reading. At this time, there are many Hebrews in Egypt. The new Pharaoh believed there were too many Hebrews in his land. He soon feared that they would become too many and take over his country. So the Egyptians put guards over the Hebrews and turned them into slaves. Pharaoh forced the Hebrews to work the land and build for him. The Hebrew people continued to grow larger and larger. This made Pharaoh even more nervous. So he ordered all Hebrew baby boys to be drowned in the Nile River. Baby Moses was a beautiful Hebrew boy who was loved by his mother very much. She knew that if Pharaoh found out he was alive, he would be killed. So his mother made a basket full of bulrushes and lowered him into the Nile River. Not long after the Pharaoh's daughter noticed the basket, she sent her servant to fetch it from the river. When Pharaoh's daughter opened the basket, she found a child inside. Moses was able to stay alive and be raised in a palace with the other Egyptians, much like the one you see here now. Moses was used to royalty, but Moses started to finally notice how bad the Egyptians treated his fellow Hebrews. Moses became angry with the one Egyptian soldier for beating a slave, and Moses killed him. Moses then had to flee and become a sheep farmer. One day, while Moses was taking care of his sheep, he noticed there was a nearby bush on fire. While Moses was taking care of his sheep, he noticed there was a nearby bush on fire, yet none of the leaves were burning. As he got closer, he heard the voice of God. The Lord told Moses he has come to rescue his people from Egypt and into the promised land. Moses was to demand to Pharaoh to free the Hebrews. Moses was scared, but he knew God would be by his side, so he headed back to Egypt. There, Moses met Pharaoh, and told him to let God's people go, but Pharaoh refused. So the Lord sent a series of plagues upon the Egyptians each more terrible than the one before. God changed the Nile River into blood. He sent a ton of frogs to cover everything. After that, gnats infested all of Egypt, then a swarm of flies. God killed all the livestock and put boils on the Egyptian people. Then the Lord brought about a hailstorm and after, locusts. Pharaoh would still not let the Hebrews go. Finally, God told Moses he would kill all the firstborn sons 
of the lamb. The only way to protect themselves was to put some blood of a lamb on the door frame. So all the Hebrews did just that, but the Egyptians did not. The next day, there was so much sadness that Pharaoh let the Hebrews go. So Moses and the Hebrews left for the desert, where God placed a pillar of clouds in the day and a pillar of fire at night for them to follow. Soon they made it to the Red Sea, but had no way to cross. God told Moses to raise his hand and stretch out his staff. There, the Red Sea was parted for everyone to travel through safely. The Hebrew people were finally free. What a cool story about how God protects and cares for his people. Even when Moses was afraid, God was by his side, and he helped him to do difficult things and stand up to people who were doing wrong. Hopefully you can do that too. Remember that God is by your side, and he will protect you. That must be why when we visited Egypt, it was completely empty, because all the Hebrews left. Thanks so much for sticking around and learning more about the Bible with me. If you enjoyed learning about Moses and would like to learn more, please like and subscribe to my channel. That way I can continue to make Bible stories so we can learn together. Until next time, have a wonderful day. I'll see you later.